We have been seeing a lot of kids with RSV in our office, and pediatric emergency rooms, hospital floors, and ICUs are at or near capacity with cases of RSV. I've been asked to make a video about RSV to explain what it is, how you get it, how to treat it, and how to protect your family from catching it. So here goes. RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus, is a virus that causes respiratory infections. It often results in mild, cold-like illnesses, but in some cases can result in more severe disease, such as pneumonia and bronchiolitis. Most children have had RSV by the time they turn two, but even if you had RSV before, you can get reinfected and show symptoms, meaning that babies, children, teens, and adults can all get sick from RSV. In the United States, we usually cases of RSV start in the fall, peak in January and February, and go away by springtime. But this year has been different. Due to the measures that we took during the COVID-19 pandemic, such as mask wearing, social distancing, and school closures, we saw very few infectious illnesses in children during the winter of 2020 and 2021, and a few more, but still less than usual, during the winter of 21 and 22. Now that those measures are no longer in place, RSV cases have gone back up, earlier and more severe than usual, likely because many children did not get RSV in the past two years, so have no immunity, causing a surge of cases right now. Anyone can get RSV, but those at risk of severe disease include premature infants, infants younger than six months old, young children with congenital heart disease or chronic lung disease, young children with compromised or weakened immune systems, children with neuromuscular disorders, adults with compromised immune systems, and older adults, especially those with underlying heart or lung disease. Four to six days after getting infected, people with RSV will develop symptoms similar to the common cold, such as fever, runny or stuffy nose, cough, sneezing, and decreased appetite. Those at risk for more severe RSV may develop pneumonia or bronchiolitis. Pneumonia is an infection that inflames the alveoli or microscopic air sacs of the lungs. Bronchiolitis is an infection causing mucus plugging of the bronchioles or smaller airways in the lungs. This is different from bronchitis, which is inflammation of the bronchi or large airways in the lungs. Symptoms of pneumonia and bronchiolitis can include cold-like symptoms mentioned earlier, as well as increased respiratory rate or fast breathing, wheezing, increased work of breathing, which manifests as flaring of the nostrils, abdominal retractions or belly breathing, intracostal retractions or tugging between the ribs, and suprasternal retractions or tugging above the breastbone. Most RSV infections go away on their own in a week or two. RSV does not respond to antibiotics, and the treatment of RSV is mostly symptomatic. You should give acetaminophen or ibuprofen to treat fever or pain, but do not use ibuprofen in infants under six months of age. You should encourage fluid intake to prevent dehydration. You can elevate the head of the bed or crib to help drain mucus secretions. A humidifier will increase air moisture, which may reduce nasal congestion. In younger children, you can use saline drops in the nose followed by bulb suctioning to help alleviate nasal congestion. We do not recommend the use of decongestants and cough medicines in children under six years of age, as they have been shown not to be effective and in some cases can have potentially serious side effects. Children who have severe symptoms and whose oxygen level is low or who are unable to stay hydrated may need to be hospitalized. Around one to two percent of infants under six months old with RSV end up in the hospital. In the hospital, children may be given extra oxygen, IV fluids, and possibly even mechanical ventilation where a machine helps them breathe. Most hospitalized children improve and are able to go home within a few days, although some may require longer hospitalization. RSV spreads through contact with respiratory droplets from an infected person, from coughing, sneezing, or kissing, or from touching surfaces contaminated with the virus and then touching your eyes, nose, or mouth. To protect yourself and your family from getting RSV, you should avoid close contact with sick people. You should wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. You should avoid touching your face with unwashed hands. And when possible, you should limit the time that children spend in childcare centers or other potentially contagious settings during periods of high RSV activity. There currently is no vaccine to protect against RSV, although scientists are working on developing a vaccine. There is an antibody called palivizumab, or Synergis, which can help prevent serious RSV disease. During times of high risk, children at high risk can get a monthly injection of palivizumab, 
but it cannot help cure or treat children already suffering from RSV. If your child is at high risk for severe RSV disease, talk to your healthcare provider to see if they qualify to receive palidizumab as a preventative measure. Doctors are worried about a triple-demic, where hospitals could become overwhelmed from cases of RSV, flu, and COVID in the coming months. Although there is no vaccine against RSV, you can protect yourself and your children six months and older with vaccines against flu and COVID. People infected with RSV can spread the virus to others starting one to two days before they even show any symptoms and for three to eight days after the onset of symptoms. In general, children with RSV can return to daycare or school once they have had no fever for 24 hours without taking any fever-reducing medication, they are eating and drinking well, and their cough is no longer distressing or frequent. You should call your pediatrician if your child is sick and having difficulty breathing, not drinking enough fluids, has a fever that lasts more than five days, is not improving after a week, or is experiencing worsening symptoms. As always, this video is intended for educational purposes. If you are concerned about your health or the health of someone in your family, you should contact your medical provider or you should seek medical attention.